Hello Form 4. In this video we're going to have a look at writing the formula of ionic compounds and for this lesson you'll need your equations booklet, your periodic table and some file paper. So firstly just a quick recap from Monday. On Monday we were having a look at our diatomic elements which we'll come back to in a later lesson and then we were having a look at finding valencies for atoms or ions and there's three ways that you can find valencies and it's important to keep that in your mind while we're doing today's lesson. So number one you can find the valency of an element from the group number if it has a group number. So for example, if the element was in group one, it would have a valency of one. If it was in group five, it would have a valency of three and so on. And hopefully you wrote those numbers at the top of your periodic table on Monday. But sometimes the element doesn't have a group number if, for example, it is in the transition metal block. And if that is the case, then you should be given a number in brackets after the element's name. So it could be something like iron with uh, three in Roman numerals in brackets after the iron. That would mean that the iron has a valency of three. Um, some of those transition metal elements, you're not given the valency in um in brackets afterwards, in which case you can check the back of the periodic table to see if they're there for elements like zinc or copper or so on. And finally, if you're working with ions, then the valency is equal to the charge of the ion, just forgetting the plus or minus. So if the charge in the ion was plus two, then the valency of two is two. If the charge on the ion was minus, then the valency of the ion would be one. So if you need to have a look over what we were doing on Monday, which was pages two to four of your notes. And what we're going to do now is use those valencies to work out the formula of ionic compounds. So we're going to be working on page five, but just to briefly introduce this, um, we, we mentioned it briefly when we were talking about ionic bonding. And if you remember, ionic compounds um, are made up of a metal and a non-metal. You might want to write that into your notes. Ionic compounds are made up of a metal and non-metal. And if you remember from our ionic bonding diagrams, sometimes one metal was needed for every one non-metal. But sometimes we needed two non-metal atoms for every one metal or vice versa. Um, and that can be represented in a formula. So let me give you an example. So the formula of magnesium oxide is MgO, so capital M, small g for magnesium and capital O for oxygen. And that means there is one magnesium for every one oxygen. But that's not the same for every ionic compound. For example, if I look at magnesium chloride, so the same metal but a different non-metal, the formula this time is MgCl2. That means for every one magnesium, we have two chlorine atoms. And back at the time of ionic bonding, we talked about how that was because magnesium had to lose two electrons and chlorine only could gain one electron. So we needed two chlorines for every one magnesium. Now, we don't need to draw out electronic structure and work that all out um, in order to get the formula. There's a quicker way of doing this. And it's really important that when we're starting out with doing this method, that you take your time and you're so, so careful with this and you follow the steps step by step. Because when you start to rush, you start to make mistakes um, and that can get you into bad habits. So please be careful with this. So I'm just going to zoom in here. This is page five of your booklet. So have that open in front of you. So when you're working out the formula of ionic compounds, and those are compounds which contain a metal and a non-metal, um, then follow this method. And in summary, I normally call this the swap and drop method. And you'll see what that means in a second. So the first thing we do is we convert the compound name to symbols. Secondly, we work out valencies, and that's what we were studying on Monday. Third thing was that we cancel down, if possible, to the simplest ratio. Fourth thing is swap and drop. Fifth thing is ignore the ones. Okay, so it's a five step process. And the more examples we do, you'll see this is actually very straightforward. But as I said, you've got to be so careful so that you don't make any mistakes. Because ultimately what we're doing here is we're writing formula that will then help us work towards writing a balanced symbol equation for a reaction. If you get the formula of the compounds wrong, then that means your equation will be totally wrong and you won't be able to balance it. 
Again, don't worry about that for now. That's at a later stage. But we want to make sure that we're doing this right from the start. So let's look at our first example. And we will follow through with these steps and hopefully they will make sense to you. We're going to look at the example of calcium bromide and you can see I've written this off to the side as well and that's just because I'm going to work underneath those names and um, so it might be helpful to write those. So step number one is convert the compound name to symbols. So we first of all got calcium and make sure you have your periodic table out in front of you. If you don't have it to hand please pause the video get that out and then um, restart the video. So um, calcium, find it on the periodic table. It's in group two and it has the symbol CA. So I would write CA underneath the calcium. The next part of the name of my ionic compound is bromide. And that has come from the element bromine. Remember when non-metals react, they change their ending to IDE. So this is just a simple atom of bromine that has become an ion. So we just use the symbol for bromine, uh, which is BR. So I would write under here BR. And you can see I'm sticking with the same colours. You don't have to colour code it, but it helps me to see where these different numbers have come from. Second step then is to work out the valencies. And remember, there are three ways to find the valency of an atom or an ion. And I've written them just above with step number two in the general method. So first thing you would check is, is the element in a group that has a number? In which case, that's the easiest way to find the valency um, with the valency associated with the group number. Secondly, um, is it a transition metal? Have you been given the valency in a number in brackets? And thirdly, um, if you haven't, if feeling both of those, um, if it's an ion, the valency will be equal to the charge. So let's have a look at our periodic table and see if we can work out the valency of these two elements, calcium and bromine. So having a look at your periodic table, um, firstly, just to recap from Monday, if you haven't already done so, please write the valencies of your elements above the group numbers. So if your element was in group one, it has a valency of one, group two has a valency of two, group three a valency of three, four a valency of four, group five, then we start to count down three, two, one, and group zero does not have a valency because they don't bond with anything. And those, re those valencies are, uh, you can see if you've written the charges associated with the group, um, you'll see they are uh, linked to the charge on the ion of an element from that group in that it's just the same as that, but without the charge, plus or minus. And that's because valency is really to do with how many um, electrons an atom needs to gain or lose to get a full outer shell. So let's go back to our example, which is calcium bromide. First of all, can we find calcium? Um, well, yes, here it is here. Um, so calcium is in group two, which means it has a valency of two. You don't need to write this in your periodic table, um, but we'll use it for our example. Then we need to find bromine. Bromine is over here in group seven. So look to the top of the group. You can see it has a valency of one. So my bromine has a valency of one. So let's go back to our example and write that in. So we're working on step number two here. I'm just going to write the symbols of the elements again. Uh, you're not going to write this out every single time, but uh, just so that you have a few worked examples in your notes. So work out the valencies. We said that the valency of calcium was two, and I normally write that in the top right hand corner um, of the metal. And then with the bromine, we said the valency is one. And I normally write that in the top left hand corner with a circle around it, just so that those two numbers are beside each other for our working out. OK, step number three then is cancel down if possible. And that is referring to the valencies. What this means is that just like a ratio, if there is a number that I could divide both of those numbers by, both of those valencies by, then I would do it. So for example, if they were both two, then you can divide by two to cancel down. Two to two is the same as one to one, okay? But in this case, there is no number that I could divide both of those by um, to make it a simpler ratio. So you can think the ratio at the minute is two to one. There is nothing simpler that I can cancel that down to. Essentially, if you have any ones, you will not be able to cancel it down. So for this example, you could just put a little X beside that. It's not possible. OK, and um, so we can we don't have to write that out again. 
Number four then is swap and drop. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to show you what I mean by swap and drop and then um, I will write my final answer beside question four. So what we mean by swap and drop the valencies is first of all we're going to swap the valencies so that the valency of calcium belongs to bromine and then the bromine valency swaps down to the calcium. The drop part means that instead of writing the numbers up at the top, we write them down at the bottom as we normally would with formula. So let me show you what we end up with here. What we would end up with is CA1, and I'm going to remove my little circles now as well that I've dropped them down. Um, I've written that in green to show that it came from the bromine. And then it will be BR2. And there's no space between these formula now, um, no space between the symbols. Um, because they are a compound, the symbols should be written together with no space in between them, just to show that they are bonded. The last step then is ignore the ones. So you can see that I've got a one in my formula and you'll be aware from some other formulas like water H2O. It's not H2O1. We don't need ones in formulas. Um, so we simply write this as C-A-B-R-2. And notice how I have written those together and um, there's no space between the symbols, okay? And um, so hopefully that makes sense. So let me run you through that again really quickly without writing the steps out each uh, time um, so that you can see this overall method. So step number one is convert the compound name to symbols. So the symbol for calcium is CA and the symbol for bromine is BR. Second step is work out the valencies. We saw that calcium is in group two, so has a valency of two. Bromine is in group seven, so has a valency of one. Second step, or sorry, third step was cancel down if possible. Is there a number I can divide both of these numbers by to make the ratio simpler? No, there isn't, so I leave it as it is. Fourth step is swap and drop. So I'm swapping those valencies and dropping the numbers down and removing the circle as well. And um, so that then becomes CA1 BR2. But then I ignore the ones. And so that then becomes CA BR2. And that is the formula of calcium bromide. And you can see how I can't just take the two symbols of the elements and stick them together because then I just would have got CABR, which is not the correct formula for calcium bromide. What this method does is it gives us the correct number of each type of atom. Let's do the next example. So the next example at the bottom of page five is magnesium oxide. So the first step in this method is to convert the compound name to symbols. So we've got magnesium, first of all. First name is magnesium, so we write Mg for the symbol of magnesium. Oxide, again, is just oxygen that has become a symbol ion. Um, again, because it's a non-metal, it changes its ending to IDE. So we write down the symbol for oxygen, which is O. Second step then is to work out the valencies. So first thing you should check is, um, does it have a group number? Therefore, can I simply get the valency from the group number? So let's have a look at the periodic table. So our first element is magnesium, and you can see it's in here in group two. So it has a valency of two. And then let's find oxygen. It's at the top of group six, and so it has a valency of two also. So let's go back to our example and write those in. The valency of magnesium we said was two. So I'm going to write Mg the symbol and then two um, up in the top right hand corner. And then with oxygen, I'm going to write O and the valency was two. So again, I'm going to write that in the top left hand corner of the symbol so that those two valencies are uh, beside each other. Step number three then is cancel down if possible. So again, you're trying to get these valencies in the simplest ratio. So is there a number that I can divide both of these by um, in order to make them a simpler ratio? Well, yes, I can divide by two. So the valency of magnesium as two divided by two, which is one, and the valency of oxygen, two divided by two is one. So the ratio of two to two is the same as one to one. I've divided both of those numbers by two. Fourth step then is swap and drop. 
and you can see how I'm just swapping the same number and um, so it won't have much of an effect here but let's write it in anyway we've got mg1 o1 and then lastly um, our last step is to ignore the ones which is um, then we can write as mg o so let me run you through that method really quickly I'm um, just writing it underneath the name um, so first of all write your symbols out mgo next write the valencies which we found was two and two next see if you can cancel them down and in this case you can cancel them down to one to one next was swap and drop which worked out as if I just read it all in the one color to save us time mg101 then we can ignore the ones and it's just MGO and notice how my two symbols are written together. And what that means is that in magnesium oxide, for every one magnesium, there is one oxygen. Let's do one more example at the top of page six and that's bringing in the examples of transition metals which don't have a grip number. So question or step number one is convert the compound name to symbols. So if you look up iron in the periodic table, it has a symbol of Fe, capital F, small e. Chloride is again just chlorine that has become an ion, um, so it's changed its ending to IDE. It has a symbol of Cl, capital C, small l. Next step is work out the valencies. Let's have a look at the periodic table. So first of all, let's find iron. And you can see iron is right in the middle of the periodic table, um, but it doesn't have a grip number. So I can't get its valency simply just from the grip number. We'll come back to that in a second. Then we've got chlorine. It's in group seven and it has a valency of one. So let's write our valencies beside uh, step number two. So we saw that iron is in that transition metal block. And so it's not in a grip number and so we can't get its valency just straight from the periodic table but what we can see is that we've been given a number in brackets after the name iron and that tells us the valency of iron so that number is equivalent to the number three so the valency of iron is three so besides step number two if you write in fe with three in uh, circled in the top right hand corner then with chlorine we said it's in group seven and so it has a valency of one. Step number three then is cancel down if possible. Is there a number that I can divide both of these by to make it a simpler ratio? Right now it's three to one. So no, there is no simpler ratio. I cannot divide those by any other number to make them simpler. So the next step is then swap and drop. So we'll write our arrows in up here. What that means is that the valency um, of chlorine is then going to become the number that's associated with iron. So it's Fe1. So drop them down to the bottom and you can remove your circle too. And then Cl and your valency has swapped down from your iron to your chlorine. So it's Cl3. Last step then is ignore the ones. So your final answer is Fe Cl3. Again, you don't need to colour code in your exam or anything like that. It's just to track where those numbers have come from and make sure there's no space in your final formula. So what I'm going to get you to do now is uh, turn to page 8 and uh, the start of page 9 and I want you to try examples 1 to 20. You should do your working out on file paper and write your final answer in your booklet. So let me show you how to set out example 1. So I would get out some file paper and I would do them exactly the way we have been doing them. So let's have a look at number one here. So you can see the question is um, asking you to write the formula of aluminium oxide. So first thing I would do is, so take some file paper and um, take a title of formula um, page eight of your equations booklet and write out the name of the compound first of all. You might want to continue doing this in a colour-coded way or um, if you're happy enough, you can do it all in the same colour. So the um, first thing is write the name. Second thing, um, which is our first step in the method, um, is to convert this to the formula. So aluminium is Al. And oxide just comes from oxygen, which has the symbol O. Next thing is find the valency. If you look at your periodic table, aluminium is in group 3, so it has a valency of 3. Oxygen is in group six, so it has a valency of two. 
Next step is, can you cancel down? And keep this method open on page five if you need it. Um, so can you cancel this down? No, you can't. And um, there's no number that you could divide both of those numbers by. If you divide it by two, um, then you would get a, a fraction for aluminium or a decimal, which doesn't work. Um, so then what we do is swap and drop. So that then becomes AL2 O3. And our last step is ignore any ones, but we don't have any here. So our final answer, which you can then write into your notes, is AL203. So note how I've written those two symbols together. There's no spaces within the formula and the little numbers go down at the bottom. So I want you to give those a go now. And um, if you just look quickly at number 12, um, or sorry, number 11 onwards, you'll see that some of these have a funny name. And um, these are not actually ionic compounds, but you can do them in the same way. Um, so just using the symbols that they've given you. So if I zoom in here, ammonia um, is made up of nitrogen and hydrogen. Um, so what you would do is write just your symbols down. You can just use those symbols. So nitrogen is in group five, so it has a valency of three. And hydrogen, we said, has a valency of one. You would then ask yourself, can you cancel down? In this case, you can't. And so you swap and drop, and your final answer would be NH3, because you would ignore the one. Um, so for these examples, 11, 12 and 13. Just use the two elements and do swap and drop with them. So I'd like you to give those a go now. Um, if you try examples 1 to 20 and then what I'd like you to do is to upload your answers and um, both your working out and your final answers in case that you're going wrong so that I can identify where you're going wrong um, to the assignment on Teams. So upload your, your working out and the final answers to the assignment on Teams. Please do that as a Word document um, so that I can mark that. What I'd like you to do now is to pause the video and try examples two, three and four. And then I will go through those quickly just um, to see how you're getting on. So have a practice at doing those yourself first. Then you can check if you've done them right so that you have confidence going forward with the next examples. And if you're not getting them right, um, then please try to work out where you're going wrong. But if you're still struggling, please get in touch with me um, so that I can try and help you before we move on with this. So as I said, pause the video now, try questions two, three and four, and then check your answers with this video before moving on with question five. Okay, so make sure that you've done these yourself before uh, playing the rest of the video to check. Um, so for question two for sodium chloride, you should have found that sodium is Na, chlorine is just chloride. Um, the valencies are one and one because sodium is in group one, chlorine is in group seven. Swap and drop, you get Na1Cl1, then you can ignore the ones and just write NaCl. For example number three, um, it is lithium, which is Li, and oxygen, which is O. Your valencies, lithium is in group one, so has a valency of one. Oxygen is in group six, so has a valency of two. Um, that can't cancel down to anything simpler. Um, your ratio is 1 to 2. So therefore, your formula will be Li2O1, but then you ignore your 1, so it's just Li2O. Aluminium bromide then for number 4. Aluminium is Al. Bromide is just bromine, um, so it's Br. Aluminium is in group 3, so has a valency of 3. Bromine is in group 7, so has a valency of 1. Swap and drop those, and you get... Al1Br3 and then ignore your ones and it's just AlBr3. So hopefully you're getting those okay and um, if you're not and you're not sure where you're going wrong please get in touch and now I'd like you to finish questions 5 to 20 and then upload your answers to Teams. Um, questions 19 and 20 are on page 6. Please stop at that point don't be tempted to go any further because the next examples are a little bit different.